Hey there's Monkey. Uh, we're back again with another episode of walking through Valheim. We're using epic loot. Uh, just to recap on where we're at in the progress through the campaign. Uh, we defeated Motor. That's the boss for the mountain biome. Uh, that gave us a couple drops. We were able to craft some new benches, uh, you know, opening up the ability to smelt black metal into uh, the black metal bars. That's the the crafting metal for the, the planes tier of, of gear. Uh, I, I did a couple short videos on, you know, preparing for the planes and also for Epic Loot, in particular, the, the upgrades that they did to the, the, the crafting bench itself the enchanting bench uh and then also like offline i i crafted a couple legendary items I actually tried to craft a whole set of like the fenris gear the fenris gear is sort of the fast lightweight gear of armor uh, it didn't go quite as planned and i'll show you that as soon as i unpause the game uh our plan though for the planes, the main goal, I actually have them drafted up on the screen over here in the corner. We're going to try to find and clear uh, fueling camps. Fueling camps are going to have most of what we're looking for out of the planes right now. We're looking for their totems. That's how we summon the next boss. We're looking for the Vegvisir to, to point us to the direction of, of the closest boss. Uh, we're also looking for flax and barley. Flax is another crafting material that goes into making most of the weapons of the planes biome. So we can't unlock the planes weapons by and large without getting a hold of some flax and taking it back to our base to, to spin it. Uh, and then barley it unlocks a, a lot of the food for the, the planes tier as well. So we, we want to get a hold of those and you'll often find those in the fueling camps. Additionally, we're going to be getting the black metal scraps from fuelings and I had talked about that before as well and coins um you know we'll have to gather up the scraps themselves and plan to boat those back to our base as needed uh but everything else we can take back through the portal so that's not a big deal and then once we find barley and flax we'll probably probably decide where we want to establish a farm uh in the outskirts of the plains because Flax and barley only grow in the plains. You can't, I can't take them back to my base in the meadows and, and grow them there. So I will build a small fort either on the border of, say, the meadows and the plains or in the plains itself. And that'll be where I grow flax and barley. And maybe I'll tame some locks and we'll talk about that as well. Um, there are some other dangers in the, the, the plains that we'll get into as we're running through it. But to talk about the map for a second here, we're east of where we fought, fought Bone Mass originally, and that puts us north of Motor, uh, awfully far south from our base. So any black metal scraps we get, it's going to be quite the haul to, to take it back. Not a huge deal, um, but I'm not I'm not too worried about that right now, honestly, because uh, in preparing for the this episode and, and doing videos and whatnot, I've had two horde attacks on my base. And as I talked about before as well, horde attacks are a great way to get black metal scraps back to your base anyway. But uh, we're just gonna sneak on through the meadows here to get up to, uh, to get up to the plains. So we're right on the outskirts uh, let me pull up that map again for you real quick. We're right on the outskirts. Here's a nice chunk of meadows, but it uh, ends up going into the plains. And, and I already pinpointed a fueling camp there. Uh, it's a really sizable one, actually. There's a three... They have, like, three bonfires. There's a, a good chunk of... Um, you'll see it when we get there. There's a good chunk of fueling berserkers. There's at least one shaman. There's a berserker right there. Uh, okay, so we didn't really run across any Deathskeetos in that, uh, that short little trip there. 
Uh, but we always want to keep an eye out for them anyway. Those are, you know, they're going to fly around. They'll poke you if you if you don't have thorns on your gear. Or you're not prepared to, like, block and parry. They can kind of hurt you really bad. Um, gather up some more cloud berries. I think we grabbed some before when we were kind of on the outskirts of the plains last time. Now, sometimes making noise around here... Oh, there's a locks over there, too. Um, sometimes making noise around here will draw the uh, fuelings out. If I can draw some out away from the base, that'd be a great idea. Otherwise, I'm going to have to either look at setting up some sort of uh, positioning, you know, advantage over them. There's a death mosquito right over there. There's two of them. They don't see me yet, but um, I'm going to go over here and deal with them. Now I have thorns on a piece of my gear. And that means that as soon as they hit me, they're going to take Thorn's damage, and that's going to that's gonna finish them off. So. Uh, that's why you want one piece of gear with Thorn's, or a shield with Thorn's, or, or whatnot. It just kind of makes short work of them. Um, so I've got a problem with this camp, though, because there's three locks sitting right here. And, and uh, locks and fuelings are basically on the same side at this point. Um... These would be great for taming, so I might go around to the other side and see if I can draw the fueling out away from the locks so I could leave those locks and then and then maybe tame them over time with some food. That'd be great. Um, so normally a great way to use the terrain to your advantage against fuelings would be to find a nice boulder that's pretty far out of the ground. See that one way over there? That one's not bad at all. Um, it's pretty far out of the ground. It's pretty far up. And then you can sort of rain arrows down on them. Uh, you want to make it so that they can't actually get up the boulder to you. So if you have to jump on top of the boulder, that would be for the best. Um, we kind of want to get established before nighttime and maybe even take this camp out before nighttime because more fueling spawn at night and that makes it a problem. Okay. So, I don't think I can... Yeah. This might work. Yeah. I think I have to jump to get up here, so that makes it... That's pretty good. Um, now, the... Berserkers will eventually break rocks with uh, some of their crazy swings, but I'm not super worried about that right now. What I want to do is see if I can just get one. Sometimes if you are sneaky, like right now you can see my uh, the little sneaky iris here is all closed. That means I'm fully stealth. But if you get a little close, sometimes you can you can stand up and draw their attention. Also, shooting an arrow sometimes will draw their attention as well. Or making some sort of noise. See, that worked. Now, he's he's on the lookout, but he hasn't actually... I don't think he's seen me yet. Yeah, no, he hasn't seen me yet. So, he's gotten far enough away from the base. Still looking. So, now this guy's seen me. I don't think he'll draw in very many of the other ones. We'll see. We'll see how many he draws in with his big scream there. Oh, he, he brought one. That's not a problem. So, in this case, recalling spear or a bow. You know, some sort of recalling weapon or just using a bow to rain down arrows on you. Just sort of lets you make really short work of these guys. Um, the fuelings are a little, actually, they're a little harder to target sometimes with this. There we go. All right. Well, that's a couple down. Now, if I wanted to get crazy, I could, you know, try to swarm the camp, but I'm not. There's two, there's two, two berserkers over there still, and quite a lot of fuelings. Um, honestly, I the the most worrisome fuelings are the ones that have uh, spears because they can hit you up on that rock, for example. Um, but since the two Berserkers are way off to the right, I'm going to throw a spear way off to the left and see if that can draw some attention. There we go. Here comes a Shaman. 
So, it's good to have good stealth. Oh, well, okay, that's that's a that's most of the camp. I'm just going to hang out here for a minute. They can't they can't see me at this point. Uh, there's definitely a couple spear ones, but they don't seem to have stars. So that's good. So they're just going to hang out for a minute. As long as they don't spot me. Okay, great. Eventually they'll eventually they'll head back. Um, to be honest, I probably could take them out. I suppose for entertainment purposes. If I can take out that shaman right there, that would be sweet. Okay. Shaman's down. Um, fuelings with spears, like I said, are going to be the, the scarier ones. But at this point, since they're all just kind of bunched up down there, I'm just going to... Start throwing my weapon down there to soften them up. Took a hit. Not a big deal. The one star and two star uh, fuelings with spears are really bad. Like, those, that would put you into the, you know, potential of getting, like, one shot range. Um, particularly with a two star. All right. My carry away it at. So we're almost full. We picked up a Frostner. Nothing, nothing big about that. Um, as I mentioned before, while the frost damage will slow the fuelings a bit, there most things out here are immune to are immune to spirit damage. So you lose all that damage off the off the Frostner. Um, and while I'm while I'm at a a, a nice moment here, um, these. Iron sides are the, the the pants that I crafted. They're supposed to be in the Fenris set, but since it rolled into a, a Ragnar set, you no longer get the Fenris bonus. Uh, so I can't I can't pair them up with two other Fenris items to get the the set bonus, which is too bad. But that's all right. Okay. Um, now that I'm here, what I want to do since this is a this is a pretty uh, secure location. Um, I'm going to grab a little bit of, a little bit more wood. Yeah, I just need one more. Okay. And I'm going to craft a workbench and I'm going to stick the, um, the portal up here. Yeah, oh. well, now they've all shown up. All right. Oh, there is a one star down there with a spear. Uh, that's my that's my main target there. If I can pick him off, I also want to get rid of the shaman. Well, they both have shields up, but it's all right. Ow. All right. Well, that's one. Ooh, you dropped a legendary. Okay. All right. This is all like easy pickings now. Um, you know, it's up to you to judge whether or not you want to. That's the, that. Those are the types of attacks that can break your boulders up. It's up to you to judge whether or not you kind of want to engage by jumping down and, and meleeing these guys.
Um, so, you know, if I wanted to do that, I could just, you know, get down here and then... What you want to avoid is that three three slams on the ground attack. That part. Because that can do a lot of damage to you. Um, and that was all, that was all borne out by just parrying, just timing their attacks. That, you know, getting those crit, you, you always hear that crit, you know, cha-ching sound <laughs> off of, uh, off of that. Uh, all right, so gather up what we can. Oh, good. Legendary Draugr Fang. That was nice. I was actually thinking about, that was, I was going to craft one of those instead of doing the, the Fenrir armor, but I did the Fenrir armor instead. Uh, let's see what we got here. I mean, I'm definitely going to switch to it because right now I have a Huntsman bow. Um, quick draw, so it draws faster. Indestructible's okay. Stamina usage, actually, that's pretty big because the stronger the bow, right, the more stamina it uses when you are uh, when you're drawing it. So um, I wonder if that's going to affect it. Right now, it still says it's got a 10 draw stamina. But we'll see. And it's got frost damage on it, so that's going to slow whatever it hits. Um, and no movement penalty. So, cool. It's a nice upgrade. Uh, I got another epic fang spear, but it doesn't have recalling on it, so I'm not interested in that. And then that's just a meltable. Uh, okay. So, since I have my portal up here right now... Uh, if I had a few more, I'd make a chest right here, but I don't, well, I guess I'll just grab some, I'll, I'll just grab some wood, it's like right, right, right here. It could be that the village is completely cleared out. Um, so there's that. Actually, I, that's, I'm going to go check that out real quick. I'll just... Oh. Oh, there's... Yeah. A couple night spawns. This is, this is the, uh, the struggle of fighting these guys. They're very much... Star. Okay. They very much circle around. Staggering them is the best thing you can do. Uh, having a sweeping attack, like a so a blunt, uh, blunt weapon, usually has a pretty good sweep attack on it. Um, I've got the spear, so I, you know, I like taking advantage of the fact that if I time my throws right, if I aim them properly, I can, I can hit them with a stagger, and that usually means I can finish him off. All right. We're just going to leave that up there for now, and we'll go make sure that this camp is clear. There's either a few guys left, or there's more night spawns. Oh, there's definitely a few guys left. That's right. So, uh, one thing to remind myself about, there are these guard towers up ahead... And usually there are fuelings positioned in them, and they, it's such that they can't come down out of the towers. Um, that's one of the reasons why sneaking up to a fueling camp can be... Oh, I dropped that on the ground. Can be problematic. Um, it's also a reason why you can get killed, because usually the guys that are guarding up on top of the uh, towers there are... Uh, Armed with spears. Now, there's only one guy, it looks like, left on the ground over here, so that's cool. Uh, I can see at least a couple chests. Chests can actually have, uh, I think, flax or barley in them and more scraps. But these guys right here, these little glowy fueling totems, 
that that's the object that we're looking for that's going to allow us to summon well, my inventory's full that's going to allow us to summon the the boss for this zone all right so what we're going to do is we're going to run back drop off any ore that we've got um, jump through our portal here and and then sort of like empty our empty our savings here empty all the, the stuff we've farmed up I'm gonna make a I'll just I'm just gonna put a chest here real quick just makes it easier to stick the ore in it Now, if you want to block the camp once you've cleared it out, just to make sort of a safe retreat, or just because you don't want fuelings to spawn back in that area again, you can always just put a workbench down um, to, to cover the area. Uh, all right. We're going to melt that one for sure, and that barb, and we'll get rid of that Skadis hunt. And then we're getting rid of that one, and this was a new drop. Um, no, nah, I already have, like, this one ranked up, and this has faint on it, so. So. Let's get rid of all of our enchanting mats here. You know, a a as always, if you ever come up with questions, or you're like, hey, you know, um, you know, in, in, a, in a future episode, can you go over, like, enchanting stuff again or make a specific video about anything in particular? Just, just let me know. I think I already have a trophy. There we go. That. Got that gold off. Again, if you don't have a recalling spear, or say you're playing on vanilla, or just haven't gotten lucky enough yet, um, you know, bows are fine. You'll just want to, you know, work on just like I've kind of worked on aiming with a spear because I'm I'm using one a lot. Uh, you just, you know, work on your bow aim. Okay. Um, while I'm here. Uh, upgrading this Draugr Fang. Some Guck, Deer Hide, Ancient Bark, and Silver. Okay. I think it's, you know, it's legendary. The rolls are pretty good. It It's good enough that, you know, upgrading it makes sense. I can always use the enchanting table to roll off. If I was going to roll something off of this, I'd roll off the 17% damage because it's health critical, which means that your health has to be below like 30 or 35%. We, you, you can look it up in the... Uh, actually, we'll, we'll look it up right now in the compendium. So, so magic effects, right? Um, not that. Uh, magic effect descriptions would be, yeah, when your health is below 30%. So I, I'm, I don't want to use a bow at that point anyway. If my health is below 30%, I want to be putting on a shield or drinking a potion or getting out of there. So I'd rather roll that off to, like, actual damage all the time uh, as opposed to, like, something that's contingent upon my health being low. Uh, the question is, do I want to spend 20 silver to upgrade it again? And I'm going to go with no... Um, right now, simply because while I, I do use bows a little bit, I don't, it's not my main weapon. If I was, if through this playthrough, I was like, well, bow is going to be my main ranged attack, then, then I definitely would, I definitely would look at, just going to make sure I rested this up. Oh yeah, the other big thing off of this legendary leggings, the reason why I'm actually wearing them, some of these rolls aren't super great but they have Featherfall. So this is something that I always had been recommending before that you wanted to get for the mountains 
or particularly before you go to Mistlands as well. Uh, because you can, eventually you'll be able to craft a cloak that gives you Featherfall, but having it earlier in the game definitely helps when you're jumping off a mountain. I would have loved to have these back when I was doing the, the mountain episodes. Uh, they'll also still be useful in the plains because, again, getting up onto a rock or climbing up into a tower, if you jump off, this will save you any sort of health loss. Um, otherwise, they're not very remarkable. They have a couple roles that I want to enchant off. I'll, you know, I'll at least enchant off one of the health critical roles. Um, poison damage reduction is good. Physical damage reduction is good. Those are both fine. I'd like some hit points or stamina, but um, where are we at? Okay, that's right. So this is our standard operating procedure, right? This is our main portal. That's the portal that's back on the beach. That's sort of our backup portal now. And this no-name portal that we have, that's sort of our scouting portal. We're going to break that down and, and, and carry it with us as we move on. I may run some of that ore back to the beach since we're pretty close to it. Once I, once I finish emptying out this fueling village... I may just like load up all the ore that I can and and run it back to the to the the beach chest j just so when I have to uh, make a boat to run all that stuff back, it'll be waiting for me. Okay, uh, there's one guy down there. Yeah. Oh, missed. All right, whatever. I'm not worried about him. He can't reach me anyway. This guy, on the other hand... Oh, can reach me. <laughs> so, as I said, these guys that are in the tower... They're, you know... Sitting ducks. All right. That appears to be... Aside from that lock down there... Locks down there, I should say. Um, I don't... I may get into taming them. The, the, the quick uh, primer on taming them is... There are an awful lot of cloud berries around here. Um, you, you saw me pick some up when I uh, when I first got into here, so they're, they're right down here. There's a, there's just a bunch. Um, there's a death mosquito. I've got thorns. I'm not worried about it. So these cloud berries that are right here, locks love to eat them. So you can, yep. You can knock some of them off, just so that they're sitting around. Uh, and if they're close enough to a locks, the locks will be drawn to eat the berries. The other option you can do is you can you can pick them. You'll want to be stealth for this, but you you can pick them and you can walk up behind a lox and drop them on the ground. Now, if you walk up to the front of a lox and you don't have tons and tons of stealth, then the lox is going to you know, see you. They have pretty good senses. They'll see you and they'll just they'll just crush you. The other thing to remember too, Dropping things on the ground doesn't doesn't change doesn't knock you out of stealth doesn't doesn't de, you know take you out of sneaking. If, however, you decide you want to split a stack, splitting a stack like will take you out of stealth. For example, if I do this and I go, okay, I see the minute I held down shift, maybe that's because of what I have my binding to. No, no, oh, I don't want sticky keys. Um. For me, holding down shift to split a stack takes me out of stealth. Make sure you either don't have the same bind that I do, or maybe that's just a feature of the game um, for splitting stacks where it's going to de-stealth you. But anyway, so if I wanted to tame these guys, I'm not saying I do, but just to give you the example, you'd get over here and you'd grab some berries out of your inventory and you'd drop them on the ground. Now, that guy already sees me. He's coming to kick my butt. So, I'm just going to have to run away until he resets. Or until I can get out of his line of sight.
Axes work fine, too, if you're like, because axes have a nice wide swing. Eventually, you can make a porcupine. That's a, that's a pretty good weapon. Um, that guy's still looking for me. He's just going to circle around for a minute. I'll, I'll give him a moment. Eventually, he's going to settle down, and then I'm not sure if some wolves came out of the mountain or some other sort of thing. Um, locks generally won't fight most of the other things in the plains. Uh, everything will fight against growths because growths are part of the undead faction. So same thing with, like, skeletons and whatnot. Um, I mean, now that this guy is this far over here, I still don't know why he's going so crazy. Again, unless there's something over here that that is not part of the Plains faction. But Death Skeetos, Fuelings, and Locks are all part of the Plains faction. Oh, just over his head. Could also be that that, lo that Lox is on fire. That's probably why he keeps running around. Keeps catching himself on fire. Um, all right. Well, maybe I'll just get rid of this one. Nope. Yeah, he's still not settling down. That is a little bit of the problem of, you know, getting <laughs> getting locks mad. Oh yeah, he just keeps just keeps catching himself on fire. I'll just I'll just finish him off. Um one of the big things with fighting locks is that they are fast. Uh if you're not in fast gear, like I've got some pretty fast lightweight armor on. But remember, equipping certain armors, like shields and, and certain things like that. I'm not entirely sure about shields. Yeah, shields have a movement speed penalty. So equipping certain things with a movement speed penalty um, puts you in a situation where it's going to be way easier for this guy to run you down. Now, I'm in light armor, so I actually have a movement bonus on at least one of my pieces. So it's easier for me to keep ahead of him. They don't take a lot of damage from Pierce. Um, although I should say, I, I, th I think their damage resistance to Pierce is normal. But they are... I'd have to look it up again. Um, yeah, that sounds right. Their resistance to Pierce is normal. They're... Because there's no yellow numbers going up there. They are, however, resistant to blunt, which is what uh, growths are vulnerable to. We'll, we'll deal with growths later, but... Generally speaking, these guys are just really tough hit point sponges. You can kite them around. A lot of backpedaling. I mean, you saw what I did there just with some movement speed and a, and a bow. Uh, I could have used... I could have used my recalling spear. I could have done that as well. I could have had my shield out. I could have tanked him. I have enough hit points and enough block that I could probably tank him. Um, like I said, I don't know that I'm going to tame these guys over here anyway. I just kind of wanted to show you how it how it worked. Um, we'll try it again. So the issue there was that there were two locks facing away from me, like these two are now. But there was one locks facing toward me. And the one facing toward me was able to see me. Now, these are like the same thing with any animal. See, okay... This lock on the left here has little yellow hearts floating up from its head. That means it ate one of the fruit I dropped on the ground and is slowly getting tame. If I sneak up on him close enough, I'll see... He's 16% tame. He's acclimatizing, right? So I can throw more berries on the ground. Eventually, when he gets hungry, he'll eat more. The thing is, though, you have to be in the vicinity. It's like taming boar. It's like taming wolves. And I haven't done any... Uh, specific videos myself on that process. Um, I, I've d gone through the process, but that's not really what I've been doing as far as tutorials go. But anyway, it's going to be the same thing. You would have to hang out nearby for, you know, the full, for eventually the whole duration for them to, to fully tame. Um, maybe I'll turn this into a farm. We'll see. 
Technically, I'm in the plains, even though it looks like the mountains, but... Uh, gold. Some bars. I'm really hoping there's some flax or some barley in here. Wow. Lots of, uh, lots of items here. Let's swap out some garbage. Um... It's a good spear, but doesn't have recalling on it. So if it doesn't have recalling, it gets the melt. Too bad. Um, you also want to make sure you check inside these huts sometimes. Uh, there can be chests in there. There can be... And, and chests, like I, I was alluding to, chests can hold... Um, can hold the the food, you know, or the the plants that you're looking for, um, and I believe there can also be like vegvasir inside the hut sometimes as well. Uh, none of these chests held anything, and I don't see any more. So what I'm going to do is take, uh, I guess, my axe. You'll notice all these things break down into those materials, right? Deer hide. You know, you can uh, make a pretty good start of, of things by breaking down some of these objects from a fueling village. I'm really just trying to get some wood at this point to make a workbench. Yeah, there we go. So what this will do is I'm just going to kind of center it up on this village right here. And it's just going to block the spawns. Now... If you want to farm fuelings and you, and you want to let them respawn and whatnot, you can go ahead and, and not do that. But by me putting this workbench down, that means any of those spawns that were in that range, you saw that little dotted line that were around there, any, any new spawns won't occur inside that circle, which basically means all these spawn points inside the village are blocked. Um, and the reason why I'm doing that is because this is my exit. To where my boat is at least at this point uh and i already have like a good amount of ore so i don't really need to farm them for ore the coins would be cool uh, in fact i'm probably going to switch my i'm going to move my orb over to this chest over here um here we go the fire's all burned out throw these things in here for now too in fact i could move my portal over here as well it wouldn't be as defended um but, but I could do that. Uh, actually, I'm going to bring these with me and jump through the portal. And then we'll, we'll finish clearing up on here, and then we'll run around and scout for another, for another camp. Okay, I edited out that drop-off just for speed's sake. The telltale sign for... The telltale sign for... Fuelings is their sound. So... You can be, I mean, I can, I can hear them off the distance right now. Now, what direction are they in? Not entirely sure yet. There we go. Spotted them over here. So in this direction, there's a fueling. You can hear them by that little giggle. <laughs> uh, it's definitely easier, probably, if you have, uh, I mean, I've got speakers up, so I can kind of tell what direction they're coming from. But if you have headphones on, it'll make it even easier. So when I need to run all this stuff back, if I need to run all this stuff back, I'll just be using like a, a med medging yards. Okay. Uh, I'm going to run around here and try to see if I can find another fueling camp. And I think this bow does not give me movement speed. But there's no movement penalties, so... One of the things you're going to want to keep uh, a lookout for, I mean, obviously lots of things, but at, at night, you get a lot of fueling spawns. You get some lock spawns as well and some extra Deathskito spawns. But one of the things you're going to want to keep a lookout for that is particularly dangerous, whether it's daytime or nighttime, are going to be tar pits. Tar pits are where the growths come from. They basically, that's where they live. Okay. Well, here we go. Uh, 
So, <laughs> ahead of me over here is a tar pit. Uh, you can tell because there's like, you know, bones kind of sticking out from the edge around it. Uh, in the daytime, it's a lot easier too. And there's tar bubbles that are popping up. It looks like really dark water. Those bubbles that are popping up are actually the growths, where, where the growths themselves are. Now, tar pits are going to be a good source of tar. And that's a, a crafting material. It's not... It, not really so much a weapon material, so I think I will probably avoid this for now, and I'll come back during the day where I can point it out to you a little better. Um, but getting into a fight with growths can be kind of nasty. This is why I brought the poison resist potion, because they can hit you with a poison, and the because they're hitting you with tar, basically, uh, it slows you down really bad. And that, that uh, snare that they put on you allows them to hit you again with more poison. Uh, they're just a, they're, they're a tough fight. Uh, if anything's a tough fight, it's growths. They also uh, jump like blobs do, and they do a, a really easy job of spotting you. Now, that said, if you're having trouble clearing out a fueling village, or if you just feel like entertaining yourself, if you can find a tar pit and a fueling village near each other, you can draw one to the other and, and they'll aggro each other. They're, like I said, they're, they're in different factions. So they will readily fight each other. And uh, it's a good way to, to, to sort of like thin both sides. I guess there must have been a couple skeletons around here, yeah. All right, so mainly still looking for fueling villages because that's where we're going to get the totems for summoning that's where we're going to find usually the uh, the the barley or flax sometimes they'll just have it planted they'll just it'll just be growing that's not a village that's just some scouts you can always grab some more cloudberries there uh, cloudberries are going to be always all over the place um you know event you know originally you'll be like oh these are great you know, and you'll you'll grab them, and you'll grab them, and then you'll you'll have like I don't know <laughs> a lot of stacks, and, and you'll realize that you can stop picking those up. All right, let's get a little faster here. So again, tar pits over there. We're just gonna circle around it for now. Oh yeah, you know what I should do? I should probably mark that. It's on the other side of this rock. <laughs> uh oh. I was a little worried. I got the, the eyeball that something's looking for me. Mark that there. Um, oh, there's holy crap. There's another. I just kind of saw it like spawn in the distance there. Look, I think that's another tar pit. Man, that looks like a big one. That can't be right. All right, well, I'm going to get up on this rock here. Um, now, whereas with fuelings, you know, I was pointing out how safe you can be being up on a rock, except for the ones that can throw spears at you. Uh, since growths can shoot, shoot tar at you, um, you're not safe on a rock. Um, you're only safe, you know, by destroying the grip, by like killing them as best you can. Um, yeah, that's another tar pit. Great. Okay, well, it's almost daytime. Um, there are a couple fuelings over here, so... Now, I'm running around a little more confident just because I've played the game before. Feel free to be as defensive as you want to be. Oh. 
Well, that's okay. He's got no, no stars. All right. So here's what happens when you mix fuelings and, and tar and growths. Yeah. Yeah, here come the growths. That's the slowing tar that they shoot out. I'm going to try to not get hit by them and try to get them to... Yeah, that. So you want to make sure that when that's going on that you're running. Um, you're moving, dodging, rolling, doing something to not be in line of sight. Well, there's... Yeah, so the fuelings are dead. Um... Because it just, it kind of comes out in a, a spray that follows you. Uh, if you remember how the thorny attacks, there we go. Uh, tar. If you remember how the attacks of the Elder kind of follow you and track you as you're running, lots of build pieces with tar. Uh, the, the tar attack is basically along the same lines. Let's see what I got for... Some wolf armor legs. Uh, the mods on here. Eider regen, not great. Frost damage reduction, okay. Health regen, yeah. But overall, the item's not great. Uh, you know, very similar to, to Diablo. <laughs> You're going to get a lot of items that are not great. Uh, okay. So. I could, I could probably finish off these growths. I mean, the... See, that's what happens. See, there's there's uh, fuelings on the other side, just basically getting shredded by the by the growths. Now, if there's a village and you got you got a half a dozen growths and you got a village, uh, the odds are a little more even at that point. You get some berserkers in the mix and uh, shaman and whatnot. But with just random fuelings kind of wandering around, uh, the the growths will just make short work of them. Oh, there's a there's fueling village down here. Sweet. All right. That reminds me. I just want to mark tar. And then... Wow. This is another uh, good-sized... Good-sized village. Wow. Okay. Great. That one. That might be a little bit off, but... Uh, so if I wanted to, since none of these are night spawns, these are all, you know, daytime spawns. So if I wanted to, again... Um, I didn't break down my my uh, no-name portal, so it's actually not that far away. Uh, there we go. Got a, little, got a little group of them. Try to draw, draw the attention of the growths. Woo. <laughs> well, I guess so. Let me skip up this magic item here. That's that poison working for you. Ooh, a one star. Now, one star's hit pretty solid. Um, again, the ones that throw spears, I'm, I would be more worried about. And I don't know why he's not fighting this growth here. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> So that's how you do it. That that's one of the things you can do. Oh, fog's no good though. Fog's fog's no good for anybody. It's not not good for recording. It's not good for you know dodging the attacks of these uh, these growths. All right. So he's he's out there still poking away. Uh, 
one stars do pretty good damage. Growth trophy, and here we go. Yep. Okay. My inventory is already. Ooh. I don't think there's very many growths left at this pool. One thing you want to take it back. <laughs> One thing you want to avoid as well is getting into the tar. Like, don't go into the tar pit itself because stepping in here will slow you down. All right, looks like it looks like all the growths are gone because there's no more there's no more tar being shot around. So they'll continue to spawn here as long as there's tar. One of the things you can do... ...is if you want to get... There's a whole lot. If you want tar, there's a whole lot of tar lumps in here, right? But if you just walk in here and grab this tar, what's going to happen is it's going to shoot up into the... You know, it says it's stuck in the tar. It, you can drain the tar out of it by digging a trench so that the tar drains off. That allows you to get at these tar um, deposits, if you will. So let me just show you. The best way is obviously to, to make it go like downhill somewhere. Um, in, in this situation, it's actually pretty easy because you could potentially get the whole thing to drain away. You just need to dig. I'm, I'm probably going to be drawing some attention, but... I'll just illustrate. In this case, you're going to want it to, to you know, follow a, a path. Usually, there's, there's a few ways of doing this. But in this situation, like normally, I would say you make your trench as deep as the deepest part of the, the tar, but I'm just going to drain a little bit away just to illustrate it to you. I can come back and get it later if I feel like it. So as you get closer, it's going to start filling up with tar. Now you got to be ready to jump out. Uh, it's going to gobble up your stamina. Um, if there's anything that might attack you, you're going to be in a bad way. See, see how this is all tar here, and I'm kind of like walking slow? It's because it's slowly draining out now, now that we're next to it. You can make it drain out faster by actually gouging it out, but you'll see that the level of tar will just go down as it runs away, following gravity. Let me get some of this stuff out of here. Okay, so... I still haven't released any of those tar things because I want to show you what happens. So I'm going to keep... I'm going to dig forward so we can get more of this stuff to drain out. It'll drain out a little bit faster. Now, if you get attacked during this, it's going to be go pretty poorly for you, but... I'm just going to go a little deeper. Okay. See, now I'm tarred. This is where you kind of want to get out of the... Yeah, it's still stuck in the tar. Um, so I've got to drain a little more out. We'll just... We'll take out this part right here. And then it should start... draining a little faster. There we go. I just want to make sure that this is draining properly. All right, 
That's running away pretty good. I still want to get a little bit more out. Okay, this one I can probably grab a hold of. So when you're going to go to grab your your tar, you want to stand right on top of it. And the reason why is because when I go to pick this up, it's going to shoot up into the air. Any of it that lands that's still in the tar, unless you've completely drained the pool of tar, it will again be stuck in the tar. So you saw before, you, you see if I step over here, it says it's stuck in the tar, right? So if I click on this one... So those all popped into my inventory. If I click on them and they wind up in the tar, it's still going to be stuck in the tar. Now this is still draining away, so I was able to pick it up. But you'll just want to remember, like, if you want to pick those up, you just want to kind of stand right on top of them when they pop like that. Also, we can collect all the other bits of gold and whatnot that were there. Now, I don't need a ton of tar right now. I'm not going to do a lot of crafting. But if you do, if you do a lot of the higher-end... Building crafting, you're probably going to want to drain an awful lot of tar to uh, to get at it. See, the black metal scrap, the coins, all stuck in the tar. So, same by the same token, if there's treasure or anything you want to get out of the out of the tar, you're going to have to drain it all away to uh, to eventually get at it. At this point, I could come over here, kind of make a a deeper pool, as it were, to give the tar, like, more area to drain away into. And if I wanted to, I could, I could continue this process and sort of fully drain... Gotta get out of there. Fully drain away the, the tar field. Um, but I'm not gonna finish that off. I do have it marked. I'm gonna run and drop off my supplies, uh, which are, you know, go through the portal and drop things off. It is interesting. There is a coast right on the other side here, so I could conceivably put another chest, like when I take out these fuelings, since it looks like they're on the coast. Uh, I could just put their ore, put a bunch of ore on this side of the island as well. And then I could just create a boat on one side, sail it around, you know, pick up pick up all of my ore from around the island and sail it back home. Which, if you're playing with friends and you need lots of ore, particularly if you're playing on vanilla, um, you may end up doing that a lot, unless you manage to get a whole bunch of horde attacks on your base as well. Um, so, but like I said, my portal's down here. So I don't, I don't have the option right now. I could go grab just more portal mats and do it that way. But instead, I'm going to run back to my portal, um, drop, all th drop off the stuff that I have inside, uh, you know, in my inventory, and then I'll go out, go over and take over that other, uh, that other fueling village. Okay, I dropped all my stuff off, grabbed my, broke down my portal. Um, and so the first thing we really need to take care of is finding a spot. I think I'm going to use this rock over here to to put our portal, to put a new portal up on so we have a place where we can, we can exit. Um, again, this looks, this is pretty close to the fueling village, but it looks like a, a rock that... Yeah. Well, if I sprint, I can get up it. That makes me a little worried, but I guess we'll see how it goes. There, there are some tricks, by the way, um, I, I won't necessarily get into them right now, but, like, to putting your portal, like, inside, inside the rock. Um, that lets you kind of, like, well, it doesn't really let you get back in, but it's a way to hide a portal. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, maybe we'll look at that some other time, but we got our no-name portal back down, and... Uh, it's a pretty sizable fueling village. Trying to look over there to see if there's anything growing, if they have any plants, like, going. But I don't know, but let's, uh, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and empty them out. Let's, let's get a little, let's get a little nuts. Okay. 
It's gonna go ahead and take out take out this uh, berserker over here. Ooh man, that. Uh... Man, that stealth hit on him. Oof. Well, I can't see where they are in that cloud of... There we go. Come on. Oh, that guy's got a star on him. Like I said, the most concerning ones would be the, uh, the ones that throw spears that have stars. Daggers with stars, also not good. Oh, look! There we go, right there, right in front of us here. That's Flax. We'll get one of those right now. Just in case. Uh, but usually, one of the nice things you can do about planes, uh, plants as well, is with a two-hander, you can just kind of hit the ground, and it harvests everything for you. So, that's kind of neat. Uh, the other thing I would worry about would be Shaman. Well, there's an awful lot of these guys in there. If I had a really good recalling two-hander, that'd be great, but I don't. Whoa. Some lag from saving there. Always backpedaling and trying to time some blocks. Whew. I don't like burning. So, just try to thin them out. Um, definitely try to get over and take care of the shaman. Oh, no. And don't get clobbered by the berserker. My health's kind of low. I need to uh, drink a healing potion. I'm leaning back in my chair. It's getting getting a little dicey here. Oh, my health's back up. Well, that problem sort of solved, but it's the even even with no stars, it's those guys being able to tag you with spears. It's kind of like you know, it's their version of the archer. Uh, I didn't have any stamina left to uh, to block. All right, We're running out of bad guys here. All right, there we go. That was brought to you courtesy of some halfway decent weaponry and hit point gear. Um, now, if I was doing this on vanilla, I wouldn't have the amount of hit points and stamina that I have right now. It just you can barely do that with even the best food. Um, on the flip side of that, the balancing point of that is that a lot of the gear I'm wearing right now, like these... Fenris leggings, or the, you know, basically Ragnar stuff. Um, they have a little bit of poison damage uh, and physical damage reduction that helps, but their armor's terrible. Like it's level one gear, right? Um, the Drake helmet's level three. That's not bad, and the uh, iron, but iron armor. I'm not even wearing like the wolf hide armor. That's like I'm wearing swamp level gear. So, you know, that's just because that's what came with thorns. But, but it's you know thorns help me helps me against the death mosquitoes, and the uh, the good rolls on the the gear sort of are a little bit of a balancing thing. You know I don't get the huge armor bonus by wearing the best wolf armor that I could craft, but I do get 
huge hit points. You know, it's do you want armor or do you want hit points? It's always that that sort of balancing thing that epic loot kind of provides you. Uh, okay, well, there's a couple fuelings left here. They're both... They're both no stars, so I can I can deal with them physically. Like, without having to worry about it. Um, wow, my inventory is, like, totally full. So... I think we've pretty much emptied this place out. That was... Um, on the bright side, we got some flax, and that is going to unlock some weaponry. On the downside, oh no, we got barley too. Now, there's no Vegvis here. I'm going to shove that ore in there, but getting the flax and the barley means we have two things we can plant. I'm going to throw these items in here for now too, because I'm going to take over this this place here. I'm going to move my portal to it, and this is going to be where my farm's going to be. Um, there's some coast over there. That's good. Let's scoop up the rest of these little rewards. Get the... Uh, yeah, got enough. I just want to make sure I had enough room. So here's, you know... That's right, you can't break down the... Oh. Okay. Well, we definitely don't need to craft a chest because there's tons all over the place. Um, now, I can't cover this whole area you know with one workbench so it's going to take me a couple workbenches to cover it all which is fine um i don't think i'm going to need oh wait hold on i was just curious if i could there's some things i should be able to break down but i don't have a stone wall to, to break down that so uh I hear him in the... He's in the trees over here. He's got a torch. You can also see that torch light behind the trees. It's alright. I need a little more wood anyway. Oh, there's four of them. What? Alright. Five. Now I better make sure that I'm looking at how many stars these guys have. Because if one of them has more than one star... That could be problematic. Woo! Well, they're doing a number on me now. I better switch back to my spear and play this a little safer. Alright. Come on. Also, particularly because I didn't put my portal up. Okay. Um, like good spot. Still need. Still need a little more wood. Um. Well. We're just going to empty this one out. Oh, that's a nice... We'll have to check that out. Let's see if this is in range. Oh, it's not. That's all right. Okay. There we go. Crafting. So we can see... The, uh, well, if I go back to here, so we can see that little white circle there, that, that edge of that circle is where the current crafting bench is sitting. So if we select to put another one down, we can overlap them a bit, or we can get some, enough, enough coverage that 
I'm not going to worry too much about the spawns that may pop up from these guys. I'm going to work on fortifying it more later. Um, but for now, I'm going to look at these uh, this Fenris coat. Well, that's really nice. Um, I think that's better than the one that I enchanted. And then I also got a pair of, it looks like, Fenring armor. The rolls on that aren't super great, but, you know, I'll have to compare it back at, back at base. Um, but we're going to finish looting out these chests here. Just, I just want to double check that there's not... At, at nighttime, particularly, it should be easier to spot a Vegas here hiding out somewhere. There's a chest. Um, I'm not worried about the ore at this point. There's, like, so much ore around here. Oh, there's a... Health regen, thorns. Well, that's definitely better than my current chest piece. This is the next tier up. Yeah, that one's solid. I mean, I lose stamina. But I think, I think I'll be okay. Um, still hearing more night spawns out there. There they are. There's a group right there. Oh, there's a one star among them. Woo! Looks bigger, doesn't he? Alright. Four of them. Or five. Again. My goal is to not get hit by this one star and try to take him out if I can. Mostly out. Jeez. Yeah, they're still... Oh. More. More barley sitting right there. Come here, buddy. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, let's see. We're going to stack some more things in here because it's really close to this workbench. Just leave those full of ore. All right. And a whole bunch more barley. Great. Okay, well, uh, the one thing we didn't find was a Vegvisir, Um, which is unfortunate because that's going to, you know, point our way to Yagleth. But we found flax and we found barley. And at this point, we've covered or faced, you know, all of the all the denizens of the plains. We've we've taken you know all those on. We didn't didn't do a whole lot of fighting locks, but um, you know I think you know through through that one uh, you know round I showed you against the locks. I mean, stay away from them. Um, try to try to try to outrun their attacks. Uh, you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe a little bit, unless they do the ground stomp, in which case they knock you back anyway. Alright. So, wow. Well, this village had a lot of stuff to it. Um, I'm gonna go... Just double check. Yeah. So, I'll end up cleaning up this place uh, off off camera and I intend to you know set up basically I'll set up a farm here I'll probably make it so that I can get to the water so I'll probably you know put workbenches out to a dock um, and otherwise make whatever adjustments I need to, to to defend it in or to block spawns or whatnot 
so that I can, you know, sort of use this as my farm. I don't, I don't feel I need to uh, let the fuelings respawn at this point. I've gotten so much ore, I, I don't even know. I'd have to run around and, like, count it, you know, re recollect it from the other side of this island and whatnot. Um, at this point, the one main thing that I have left to do is to go get... I'm sorry, I wanted to pop back through here. The one main thing that I have left to do is to find a Veg Uh I'll also do that off off camera. All right, so we're gonna drop this, uh, drop some flax in here. I guess I'm not gonna drop it all in because we wanna be able to plant some. So I'm gonna save some for planting. Uh, same, same, same thing with the barley. I left some of that back in there. Uh, just to look at some of the items we got. Uh, you know, that wolf chest that I'm gonna wear now, I mean, it's got 19% thorns, so a little bit of a bump up from the other one. Uh, we do lose the, the stamina, but I think we're fine as far as that goes. Uh, health regen and eider regen. The health regen's okay. We don't have eider right now. Uh, we won't have it until we get some pieces that have eider on it and until we beat Yagleth to, to get to the Mistlands. Uh, the damage reduction's fine, too. It, it's an okay piece. There's other roles that I would like to have on there. Hit points would be great. Stamina would also be great. Um, excuse me. We did get a yellow um, with thorns and armor. That's just going to get melted. Uh, a lifesteal recalling uh, Frostner. I, I don't think I want to mess around trying to enchant throwable onto it. Um, it's too many too many attempts. I already have a stag breaker I was trying to get throwable on or recalling on or something like that. So uh, that's not worth my enchanting mats at this point. Uh, this Fenrir coat, though, is really nice. I'm If I can get thorns on a different piece of armor, I will probably equip this Fenris coat because eventually when we get to the Mislins, having Featherfall and having speed is something that I, I I tend to enjoy. I didn't I didn't used to enjoy it, I think, in some of in my earlier playthroughs. I liked having the heavier armor so I could take a hit. But as you get more comfortable with combat and dodging and 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 not being in the way of where the swing's coming from, or at least having a good enough shield and block to be able to parry effectively, having all of that extra armor on top. You want just enough armor so you can successfully parry. You don't need the extra armor if your whole goal is to parry and then kill them before they can swing again, or to not even be in, you know, in the, the path of their attack. Um, uh, other than that, I think we already looked at the, the, the pants. I'll just, I'll look at them again. Yeah, health regen durability, nothing nothing great. I already have uh, these, even though it's not part of the set. I'll, I'll try to maybe sort that out in the future if I decide I will actually want the three-piece bonus, which is the, um, you know, gives you resistant versus fire. That would maybe maybe be nice to have. So uh, off camera, I'll find the Vagvisir that points to Yagleth. And for our next episode, I'll... We'll talk about where we found it. Uh, I'll point out anything else of interest that I found along the way as I scout out the planes to find that. And it'll be the Yagleth fight will be the, the main content of the next episode. And at this point, you know, I'd like to say once again, thanks for watching. I appreciate you giving me your time. Don't forget to tap that like button down below. If you haven't yet, touch the monkey over in the corner and subscribe. And... I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.